Hey, welcome to our midweek core group. Hope that you are enjoying this new season as we come together in these Koinonia core groups and uh, draw closer to each other and most importantly, draw closer to God. I, I sense that you are already connecting uh, with one another in some of these groups. I was in uh, one of our midweek core groups this past week and uh, had such a great time hearing from some of the uh, the other participants in the core group as Pastor Hannah led us through uh, a season of, of kind of getting to know each other a little better. And if you missed that uh, core group, you can always go back uh, to our website and pick up on the, uh, the past uh, core groups that have uh, been shared. Uh, this evening, of course, uh, we want to uh, join in prayer. And uh, so on the screen will be a prayer request. As those cycle through, uh, don't hesitate to uh, take some time to, to share any prayer requests that you may have in the group and then, uh, and then close in prayer. At the end of the, uh, the time of, of prayer, there will be a counter that uh, shows up on the, uh, on the bottom of the screen. And uh, you are welcome to pause that if you need more time at any point in time. Uh, but after you've shared your prayer requests, as well as answers to prayer, uh, would you find somebody to, uh, to lead your group in prayer this evening? Amen. Amen. I find that uh, one of the most uh, powerful elements of this season of, of being together in Koinonia core groups is the opportunity to do just what we did here together. And that is to share praise reports, to share prayer requests, and to pray together. Well, we, we talked uh, a little bit uh, in our uh, Sunday theme this past Sunday, and we're going through the uh, half million mobilization prayer emphasis uh, from uh, the 1st of May down through uh, the end of, uh, of Pentecost, going through Pentecost Sunday, uh, those 35, 36 days of prayer. Hope that you're diving into uh, those daily devotionals. If you haven't got a chance to uh, pick up one of those prayer journals, there should be some at the uh, church in the uh, uh, foyer at the welcome table by the big TV. Uh, or you can go online to the App Store and uh, download the, the free app uh, that will have all the devotionals for you. Or you can go and download a PDF version of it. And if you need any help with that, uh, don't hesitate to call the office or check with uh, Pastor Hannah, our, our youth and media pastor, who will be glad to help you in any which way to assist you with that. Uh, but as we go through this theme of, of prayer for these, uh, these uh, five weeks, uh, through the half million mobilization of calling on people across the United States, across Canada, really across the world, to, to mobilize together in prayer. 
One of the themes that comes out of this is the theme of, of Joshua and uh, the people uh, taking hold of the promise that God had given them. I shared with you that this promise was a promise that was 400 years in the making. Uh, and, and God fulfilled a promise that he had promised uh, countless people generations before. And, and here in the book of Joshua, we see that Joshua and the people of God taking hold of this, this 400 year uh, promise. It, it is the fulfillment. And, and some of us are, were like, really, 400 years? Is that, is that how long it's going to take? I, I, I've been praying for four days, and, and I'm, I'm wondering when this is going to come to pass. And, and I don't think we have to be discouraged. We, we don't have to get uh, distressed that, uh, that the promise is not coming as, as it should. But it should help us to recognize that, that God is never slow in fulfilling His promise. He is always right on time. There are things that God gives us a vision for years before. And, and I've been reminded even this past week that, that sometimes the thing that brings about the vision, uh, that gives birth to a vision, is not always the thing that fulfills the vision. And, and sometimes the, the true test of, of real vision is, is that it outlasts the visionary. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, that my family is 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 dealing with and and working with as as we we share about uh, you know the passing of my father just a little over nine months ago and and this week we had the privilege of 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 participating in something and it was really it was really unique it was really a, a family effort of something that my father had been working on it was it was something that my father as a visionary had seen and and had a heart's desire for and uh, and it didn't happen in his lifetime but but as as a as a family we got the privilege of of working together on this and, and we we recognize that uh, that there are always obstacles uh, there are obstacles that will be thrown our way there are there are opposition that will be put up in our past. But, but remember, as we shared Sunday, that, that although there is always opposition, along with opposition comes opportunities. And always there will be some obstacles that are thrown in our path. Uh, but whenever there are obstacles, there will always be options. Well, this this experience from my own family's uh, life is is really one of those things that was kind of filled with with opposition, filled with obstacles, but also God revealed lots of opportunities and options. Uh, my oldest brother had had come across a a uh, fifteen passenger van at uh, at his daughter and son in law's church. They're pastor, associate pastor to church Nazarene Church in Wagner. Oklahoma and the church was getting rid of this 15 passenger van and, and so when my father was alive he talked to my dad about you know would they be interested in using that in Belize and and uh, my dad reached out to me and we talked about it and, and said absolutely yes they, they'd be they'd be tickled to death to have it and so uh, the key was finding a way to get it uh, from Oklahoma to Belize and it was something that my my father was working on before he passed away uh, but my oldest brother got the van and, and uh, my older brothers, they, they worked together on, on getting the van kind of fixed up and prepared. Had a mechanic at, at uh, one of their churches volunteer their time to, uh, to go through the van and get it to put together. Uh, we had to coordinate on, on the Belize end, and so I was able to coordinate with the uh, district superintendent of Belize to, to see about the, the paperwork and in putting these things together at the right place at the right time to get duty exemption and, and be able to get the van shipped in. We had to arrange for the payment on the duty. and uh, A friend of ours uh, that was a friend of my dad's and a friend of mine and a friend of my brother's that uh, lives there in Belize was up in Oklahoma and was uh, going to be bringing some supplies back uh, uh, to Belize. And so he was able to uh, to drive the van and tow another vehicle behind it, 
And, and all, of these, all of these things, there was lots of obstacles and lots of challenges and paperwork and, and things that didn't get done uh, the way they should have been done and looking for titles. And, and there was just all these obstacles and all of these, all of these uh, opposition that, that popped up along the way. But, but as, as the, the whole family kind of worked on it and, and uh, several of us from different angles put our, our resources together, uh, I was able to... Uh, uh, to get a report just this past week, and and uh, and here you you can see a, a couple of the pictures of the Valley of Peace Church of the Nazarene, uh, their newest 15 passenger van filled with kids, uh, being picked up on a Wednesday night and being taken to to church, and and what a what a fulfillment of of a long standing dream and vision of of my dad's. Uh, and uh, and my brothers and 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 several people working together from different angles, Belizeans and and the district superintendent and and pastors of churches and and to see the fulfillment of all of these things coming to pass. And I was reminded of that the the truth that uh, that God is never late. He is always right on time. And I, and I look at the, the bright, smiling faces of those kids and in that, that packed into that van like sardines. And, and, and I think about how God has been putting that together and how we just had the privilege as a family to, to partner together and, and work together and, and, and see those things come to pass. Uh, there's, there's lots of things that, that, that God has been doing, but, uh, but it was something that my dad started working on on over a year ago or a couple of years ago actually as he began to kind of work the details but at the right place at the right time God put all the pieces and all the people and all the details together and things came to pass and the result is is fantastic and to to God be the glory uh, we don't take any credit for it we don't have any praise for it but to God be the glory for Him allowing us the privilege of kind of seeing these things come together and work together at the right place at the right time. And, and really, we, we give God the praise for working out uh, the miracle in this situation and circumstance. And so I wanted to begin this evening, and, and we're going we're gonna to kind of tag off of what uh, Pastor Hannah did last week and, and she kind of asked some questions that, that challenged us to, to dig a little deeper into our relationships. And, and so this evening I, I want you to, uh, I'm not asking anybody to share anything that, that is uh, uncomfortable or, or, or out of the way for them, but, but I would ask you to, to, to think about just digging a little deeper into to your own experience, into your own situation. And and uh, maybe being a little more vulnerable even this evening, and and we we looked at the the one question that we talked about uh, on Sunday about uh, what is your Jericho, and so I, I want you to think about this in, in in the context of of what are the obstacles or are the oppositions that that stand in in your way. We we talked about the fact that Jericho could be spelled in many different ways. If you have cancer, Jericho is spelled healing. If you have a family member that's far away from God, you remember we shared it, it, the Jericho can be spelled salvation. If, if there's a relationship or a marriage that's falling apart, uh, then Jericho is spelled reconciliation. If you have a, a goal or a vision that's beyond your resources, you remember Jericho could be spelled provision. So this evening, would you take the next couple of moments, and, and again, the, the timer will pop up when the, the timing is coming close, but if you need more time, don't hesitate before that timer runs out, just to pause it and, and, and continue the conversation. But, but share with the group this evening, what is your Jericho? What are the obstacles or the opposition that, that are standing in your way uh, that you can share with your group this evening?
Thank you for, for going a little deeper and, and, uh, and maybe being open to uh, allowing yourself to be vulnerable. And whatever your Jericho is, whatever the challenge is that's before you, whatever the, the obstacle or the opposition that lies before you, remember we shared that whenever there's opposition, there will always be opportunities. Whenever there are obstacles, there is always an option. I want us to remember that there is always a choice. In every situation, every circumstance of life, there is always a choice. We can choose this day whom we will serve, as Joshua declares to the people of God. The end of his ministry, he, he challenges them that, that they would make the choice on, on who they would serve. But he said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so that's, that's really the next question I want you to, to dive into this evening. And that is, is what, are the, what are the opportunities? What are the options that are before you? And how do they impact your life, your ministry, or whatever God is calling you to? So share some of the options or some of the opportunities that are before you. As it relates to this 15-passenger uh, van, one of the options for us could have been just forget it. Uh, it's, it's too difficult. We don't have we don't have the time. We don't have the energy. There's lots of other things going on. Uh, we could just get rid of the van, some other method, give it to another ministry, uh, do something else. Uh, but we sincerely believe that this was something that my dad had a vision for and that God was calling him to, and it was our responsibility to carry that vision forward. And so when, when, we, when we recognize that, we recognize it as an opportunity, an opportunity for us to, to team up, to work together, and to fulfill the vision that God had laid on my dad's heart and life uh, some many months ago. So there are always options. You can give up or you can go on. You can quit 
or you can dig in and continue to believe that what God has called you to, God will provide for you. That's really the last question that I want you to to be willing to to kind of uh, dig deep this evening. Again, I'm not asking you to uh, to share anything that uh, that is compromising or anything that is uncomfortable. But here's the last question that I want you to to discuss, and that is is what is it that you need God to do for you? Would you be willing to to share? boldly would you be willing to be share openly and say what is it that you really need God to do in your situation or circumstance start with the promises like we read in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 or or Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 through 7 take time to to think and praise some of the the God glorifying goals in your life De- define your Jericho and and then answer the question What is it that you want or really need God to do for you? You remember Sunday we we talked about the miracle nearly a thousand years later, more than a thousand years later, that takes place near Jericho once again. And we talked about the fact that Jesus was walking that day and, and, and came upon two blind men sitting by the roadside. And they cried out to Jesus, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. And you remember the disciples, they thought it was an interruption. They thought that Jesus didn't have time. But, uh, but uh, Jesus stopped and he asked them this very specific question. What is it that you want me to do for you? I believe it's important for us to know what we need God to do in our lives. Uh, sometimes we, we spend too much time and too much energy just praying vague prayers. I believe that God... He knows what we need, but I believe that He also wants us to know what we need. Because if if we pray vague prayers, when God answers, we don't know that He specifically answered. That, that's what I love about, about our, our, our counting of answers to prayer and sharing specific requests and, and specific 
answers to prayer is because we are rejoicing in, in these over 5,000 times that, that God has specifically answered a specific need or specific prayer. But when we just pray that God would bless all the people and bless our family or, or bless all the missionaries all over the world, we, we don't know when God specifically answers that prayer. If we don't know the specific calling that God has on our life, and we don't know what it is that we need God to do for us, then, then how do we know when God has done what we need Him to do? And so Jesus very distinctly asks to these blind men, a thousand years after the walls of Jericho came crumbling down, what is it that you want me to do for you? Listen to this statement that I shared on Sunday. If faith is being sure of what we hope for, then being unsure of what we hope for is the antithesis, antithesis of faith. Well-developed faith results in well-defined prayers, and well-defined prayers result in a well-lived life. We all have some obstacles. We all have some opposition that stands in our way. But when we recognize and define what our Jericho is, then we can begin to look for the opportunities and the options that lay before us. And when we see the opportunities that God has given us, and when we see the options that are there before us, we can clearly define what we need God to do in our behalf. And we can call out to Him in faith believing that God hears and answers our prayer, and that God wants to work out all things according to His will and for His glory and for our good. Can you trust Him? I can't imagine having missed out the beautiful picture of those smiling faces, of those kids, that God is using that vehicle, a simple thing, to carry to church. All because of a vision that happened many months ago and a decision and an opportunity and an option to follow through. Realizing that there were some obstacles, some Jerichos in the way, but in this simple analogy, God delivered and we got the opportunity to witness God work in the hearts and lives of these kids. And who knows? Who knows where that simple act of obedience will fulfill the heart and life. There may be in that picture, in that van, future pastors, future leaders, future teachers, future missionaries of the Church of the Nazarene right there in the village of Valley of Peace. Who knows? The things that you're doing, the obstacles that you're facing, uh, the, the opposition that you're dealing with. Who knows how God will use that situation, that circumstance to open the right door, the right place, the right time. You remember from the story of Joshua, as the walls of Jericho came crumbling down, the spies went in and they, they, were, they were taken in by Rahab the prostitute. And Rahab uh, hid them and, and secured them. And, and with that, they were given the opportunity to be free and to escape from the, their captors with the promise uh, that when they came, that if she was faithful, if she tied that red cord on her window, on her door, uh, that they would spare her and her family. As a result... You know, as you look through the genealogy of Jesus, uh, that Rahab is a part of the genealogy and the line of the Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Who knows what one simple task, when you face one opposition, when you see the walls of opposition and, and, and obstacles come crashing down, how God will use you in that situation to bring about His glory. So, define your Jericho. Figure out what opportunities and options are before you. And identify what you need God to do that you can pray in faith, believing that God would use all things for our good and most importantly for His glory. Let me pray with you this evening. Father, thank you. Thank you this day for the obstacles that stand in our way. Thank you, O oh God, for the opposition that sometimes we face that, that takes the wind out of our sails, that 
clips us off at the knees and makes us feel like there's no way out. But oh God, these are the times that we get to see you work out a miracle. These are the times in which we get to see you open the doors and, and make a way and, and pave the way for all these things to come together, the right place at the right time, for your glory, for the furtherance of your kingdom, and for our good and your praise. Thank you, Lord, for this gathering. Thank you for this body of believers that gathers together in these homes and in these meeting places. And I pray, God, that you would help us to draw closer to each other and most importantly, oh God, to draw closer to you. In Christ's precious and holy name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Hey, thanks for sharing with us this week. I look forward to uh, being with each and every one of you this weekend on Sunday as we continue to... Uh, uh, make our way towards uh, Pentecost Sunday as we share together in this season. God bless. Have a great night.